You have to wonder what humans are all about. We keep saying it because when you consider the existence of everything that has ever been, it stretches our imagination to the very depths of reality in a world that is billions of years old. You would have to consider that at some point in the past 5 billion or so years that some sort of activity would have been taking place here on Earth by a civilization that were advanced, yet we are told that no such activity occurred. The denial of such things only serves to justify our question of these things in a time when it can't be denied that something did happen here and the evidence all across this planet are clues to the encryption that is civilization itself. We are finding things all the time that are classed as ancient. This very word means that something is belonging to the distant past and no longer in existence. We use this word to describe the things we find that supposedly we had forgotten about. One such finding just recently comes from a dried out reservoir in Iraq. Wait to hear this. At the site of Iraq's Mosul Dam Reservoir, a sensational find of a 3,600 year old palace at Kamun, and it is thought it once stood at an elevated position overlooking the river Tigris. Researchers from the University of Tübingen and the Kurdistan Archaeological Organization said the structure dates to the Mitanni Empire, which ruled parts of northern Mesopotamia and Syria in the 15th and 14th century BC. Some of the site's mud brick walls measure more than six feet thick and stand more than six feet tall. Rare traces of bright red and blue wall paintings have also been uncovered. Kamun is only the second site in the region where wall paintings of the Mitanni period have been discovered. Ten cuneiform tablets at the site could offer new information about the politics, economy, and history of the Mitanni Empire, and possibly identify the site as the ancient city of Zekhaiku, mentioned in an ancient source dating to 1800 BC. The palace has been submerged anew since the archaeological investigation took place. It is unclear when it will emerge again. The emergence of understanding in this region is what we conclude today when we consider the cradle of civilization. Is it here that most things emerged, including the concept of a city with roads and buildings, to the first written communication? Hundreds of media outlets around the world reported in 2016 that a set of recently deciphered ancient clay tablets revealed that Babylonian astronomers were more sophisticated than previously believed. The wedge-shaped writing on the tablets, known as cuneiform, demonstrated that these ancient stargazers used geometric calculations to predict the motion of Jupiter. Scholars had assumed it wasn't until almost AD 1400 that these techniques were first employed by English and French mathematicians, but here was proof that nearly 2,000 years earlier, ancient people were every bit as advanced as Renaissance era scholars. After cuneiform was replaced by alphabetic writing sometime after the first century AD, the hundreds of thousands of clay tablets and other inscribed objects went unread for nearly 2,000 years. It wasn't until the early 19th century when archaeologists first began to excavate the tablets that scholars could begin to attempt to understand these texts. One important early key to deciphering the script proved to be the discovery of a kind of cuneiform Rosetta Stone, a 500 BC trilingual inscription at the site of Bicetun Pass in Iran. Written in Persian, Akkadian, and an Iranian language known as Elamite, it recorded the feats of the Akedamid king Darius the Great. By deciphering repetitive words such as Darius and king in Persian, scholars were able to slowly piece together how cuneiform worked. Called Assyriologists, these specialists were eventually able to translate different languages written in cuneiform across many eras, though some early versions of the script remain undeciphered. Today, the ability to read cuneiform is a key to understanding all manner of cultural activities in the ancient Near East, from determining what was known as the cosmos and its workings, to the august lives of Assyrian kings, to the secrets of making a Babylonian stew. Of the estimated half million cuneiform objects that have been excavated, many have yet to be cataloged and translated. 
Many scholars have translated the word abyss to mean a deep body of water. Likewise, Assyriologists assume the Sumerian Abzu is the mythological deep body of fresh water, an underground water source. However, considering the ways in which both the abyss and Abzu are described in ancient texts and depicted on cylinder seals, it's highly unlikely that any such translation is completely revealing or entirely accurate. According to biblical texts, there's a hidden door to the abyss and a bottomless pit in the vicinity of the Euphrates River, a stargate of sorts. It's been there buried under the ruins of the ancient Mesopotamian city of Eridu for thousands of years. This abyss mentioned in the Bible is also referred to in Sumerian text as the Abzu and is associated with a Sumerian god known as Enkie. This relief in the British Museum shows the Anunnaki king Ninurta in a gateway. He is very clearly using a finger to push something on the wall of the gate. Question is, what? Is he activating the portal? Just some food for thought, and we will be covering this topic in more detail in our next video, so watch out for that. Also, we would like to encourage you guys to subscribe to our backup channel, Light Up the Dark. There you will find dozens of other videos that does not appear here on Lost History, so head on over and check that out. And we'd also like to mention that we are on Patreon and BitChute, as well as being active on Twitter and Facebook. We will provide those additional links below. Your support is greatly appreciated. Comments below, guys. And as always, thank you for watching.